Hello gamers, hope you're all having a great day so far. Thanks for tuning in to Seven by. My name is Rist, and I will be your guide, your item, starting item guide, into Demasi here today. We're going to be rating all the items that you can build to start with on Garen. What items will be amazing to build, what items are not so good to build. I'll go ahead and rate it on this tier list here that I rate, made in the client here, this makeshift guide. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Um, so I get asked a lot about starting items, and right now, Garen's starting item variety is pretty diverse. He's got a lot of really great choices. But it can really depend on what you need and what you're looking to accomplish. So we're going to go one at a time. We're going to go do a quick synopsis on each one. And I'm going to go ahead and rate what I think of them. All right. So the first item here we have is going to be Longsword. Now, Longsword is very popular by Ribbon players because they pair it with three potions. Um, situationally, yes, you could go ahead and take this to play aggressive in certain lanes, pair it with three potions, and try your best to play aggressive. Problem with that is, like, if we try to go ahead and, and replicate a certain strategy created by another champion with Ribbon, what can Ribbon do level 1? She has three dashes on one Q. Garen doesn't have that. It's got a speed boost on Q, but most likely if you're going to be fighting someone level 1, you're going to be using Spin Pair with Conquer. So as a result, I really don't like Longsword. Um... 3-pot. However, I do understand that there might be a Gear Knight player out there who might be able to facilitate a strategy with a Longsword. So as a result, I'm going to go ahead and put this in good sometimes, maybe. I, I, I th I'd like to th say that there's probably viability for it. Um, it's just something that I haven't personally entertained, but it could maybe be good. Um, next up, we're going to talk about Ruby Crystal. Ruby Crystal, as you guys know, has been a popular starting item for me in a lot of games, and the reason why it's surfaced, particularly, has been for two primary reasons. One, the viability of rushing Bami Cinder, which with the purchase of Ruby Crystal, uh, all you need to upgrade into a quick Bami Cinder can be accomplished in a few minutes with 600 gold. And then two, the nerf nerf of Dorn Shield, which we will cover uh, later in this video, because uh, it's going to be up there in the roster. Ruby Crystal is really great to pair with Second Wind. The more health you have, the more it means the more HP you can potentially be missing. The more HP you're missing, the more you get back with Second Wind. You're also able to pair two uh, health potions with it compared to what Dorn Shield has. And in your when you're in a situation where you're getting constantly sprayed with AoE damage, a good example of this could be like a uh, AP Gnosis or an Aurelian Soul or a Ziggs for that matter. It really shines as an alternative because, again, Dorn Shield has a penalty for AoE damage. So again, if your opponent's hitting with a bunch of AoE damage, you're not really going to get the full value out of Dorn Shield. Also, if you guys are playing versus champions that do AoE damage and greatly benefit um, against by building Bami Cinder, like for example, Akali. Akali is a big example here. Ruby Crystal is going to be your go-to. I really recommend, guys, if you guys have confidence in uh, being able to... Uh, just skip out on Dorn Shield. You guys will benefit from it so much. You guys don't even need to build bombies. You can just go into a Strybreaker earlier, a Gore Drinker, a Trinity Force, or whatever have you. Honestly, if you if you guys uh, are not playing versus an Auction, a Lucian, any hyper aggressive ADC, Draven, um, or maybe even LeBlanc, I really recommend uh, 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 Ruby Crystal. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the good starting items tier. Boots is rather interesting. So for mid lane, when you're playing versus champions with more skill shots, the more movement speed that you have early on, the more you can avoid. Another big outlier of this uh, example is Comet. Comet is a rune that kind of falls off really hard once the enemy uh, champion that's playing against Comet gets movement speed to avoid the proc. So if you guys are playing versus a Comet champion, like for example, uh, maybe Zig, Zig players take Comet, um, Zerath players take Comet, um, Boots not only allows you to dodge abilities, uh, but also to avoid combat proc. Another good example of this is First Strike users too. If you guys believe that you can get Boots to help you dodge abilities from First Strike users, they don't activate the rune, they don't activate the rune, they don't generate gold, they don't generate gold, they don't build items, they don't build items, they don't carry, so on and so forth. Uh, so forth. Um, so yeah, Boots is a really, really great choice. Uh, shout out to any Predator Garen players that still exist, because if you guys are taking Predator Garen, then Boots 4 is going to be right up your alley. Pairing it with four potions, too, is also a really attractive choice. Um, and if you guys are planning on roaming early on, I really do recommend the Boots 4. So because of that, I'm going to uh, label Boots 4 in good starting items. All right, next up is going to be Rejuvenation Bead. A lot of people ask me about Rejuven Beads for uh, time to time. You know, you can pair this with a Ruby Crystal. I'm sorry, a refillable potion. But the question is, is it good to build re Rejuvenation Bead? I'm going to say absolutely not. I mean, Garen's base health regen is really bad. And um, maybe you get some value out, out of this item when you approach level 7. But for the first six levels of your laning phase, there's just not going to be any value on this item. 
Um, it was it was much different uh, back in the day when you could stack three rigid beads and you could sell them back for gold. It was really really great. But now with rejuvenation bead in its current state, no one's realistically building it. I think. Um, so as a result, we're gonna go ahead and put it into the don't build these tier. Yeah, or don't build this for that matter. Uh, next up is gonna be cloth armor. So back in season 12, I thought cloth four was actually really insane. Um, used to be really good versus certain champions who would all in you early, like Jax, um, potentially, uh, maybe, uh, Olaf. Pretty decent versus Trinity Mirror because it would access, uh, either an early Warden's Mail or a Steel Caps. Problem with this strategy, though, is because they nerf potions individually and now you only get 120, um, per potion, I believe now, instead of 150, um, the strategy is ultimately much worse. Um, is there a world where you would maybe want to build Cloth 4 versus your lane opponent? I personally don't think so. Um, I think because of the, the uh, potions being so bad right now uh, in terms of stacking that it's not really that great. However, it is identical to stacking fourth potion, uh, 4 potions with um, Boots, Boots 4. So as a result, I'm not going to say it's automatically bad, but as, as a result, I wouldn't recommend building it all the time. You can maybe build it some of the time. Uh, let's talk about Dagger, because people sometimes think, especially newer Garen players, they say, hey, if I build Dagger, that means I get an extra spin earlier. Well, that's not exactly the case. you got to wait until level 6 to really get value out of this Dagger. Do you want to get Dagger uh, first outing to go ahead and, and uh, create a lead versus your opponent? No, I'm not going to say that's potentially viable. You're you're better off building a different item if you want to put aggression out, either Dorn's Blade or Long Sword 3 Pots. So I'm going to say, do not build this item at all. It's good as a component. Do not start the game with it. No Magic Mantle kind of falls into the same category as Cloth War. And what's worse about No Magic Mantle is that you can only pair it with one health potion. Um, could this situationally be good? I don't exactly know. My math experts out there are probably going, uh, are probably going to have to math out some uh, scenarios in edge case as to like could no magic mantle selectively be better than a uh, ruby crystal teapot and like and maybe if the champion has percent damage early on maybe that is justified but as a result based on what i feel in assessment i don't think this is personally good to build but does it have hidden potential maybe so i'm gonna go ahead and say maybe build it sometime although i have to say with the disclaimer guys that i don't think anyone's really realistically building it right now um next up is gonna be Dorn shield Dorn shield has historically been garen's most reliable uh starting item um for years and years now and what has been the big shakeup to allow some of these other uh item choices has been the nerfs so now um you get two uh less hp Per five seconds so that means you get four less uh four less every 10 seconds um basically means you get 12 less hp every minute um it does really add up and on top of that too like if you guys are building dorn shield as i said before versus aoe dealing champions i really feel like you get diminished value on this item the resale value is bad enough as is however i must acknowledge that it's still really good versus champions with a lot of point and click single target damage leblanc adc's lucian auction this this item Still has a place on Garen, and you should still do a, uh, expect to build it in, in a good portion of your games, just not all the time like it used to be. So as a result, I'm going to, I'm going to place it in the good starting items category. Next up is Call. I get asked about Call quite a bit, and um, I have to say historically, I think Call has always been a joke on Garen. I, I just think that Call is way too dangerous. You could build Call on champions that have a extremely large advantage versus your opponent early. Um, for Garen, unless he's playing versus Yumi top lane, that isn't really too apparent. You could build it versus Nasus. However, if Nasus says, hey, I'm going to go in Emax versus Garen, you start Cole versus Nasus, you guys are going to be in for a world of trouble. So as a result, I don't think I would ever really start with Cole and Garen. It's way too dangerous. And if you guys do build it, well, I wish you the best of luck because uh, you guys are one, one da uh, dangerous, brave souls out there. Um, so as a result, I'm going to say don't build this. Highly recommend not to build call. Let's talk about Dorn's Blade as one of our final items to talk about. All right, so Dorn's Blade is rather interesting here because it does offer Omni Vamp, which applies to Garen's Q, applies to his spin, applies to his ultimate. The problem with the Omni Vamp on Garen is because uh, of Omni Vamp's AoE penalty. Garen's one of primary damage ability abilities is a AoE ability. Um, it's not so valuable to build Dorian's Blade on Garen as it is other champions. However, I must acknowledge that 8 attack damage, 80 health, 
and the omni vamp that you get on auto attacks and all is still pretty substantial um if you guys are looking to play aggressive like for example a q max stacking nasus or if you guys are looking to play against a uh, i don't know like maybe a Jax if you guys are feeling really confident or an autofill top laner specifically or ribbon who's looking to play aggressive against you early you guys can take the Blade and get away with it um, the, the big prerequisite of this item is that you must be confident in using it. Um, so as a result, I'm going to say Dorian's Blade is good sometimes. But again, that, that, that prerequisite of being confident is the most important factor of Dorian's Blade. You guys really know you need to know your limits because if you backfire with this item, it can be extremely punishing. Last item I want to talk about is Rephoba Potion. Now, I, I, I don't know who out there this may apply to. These people out there, the super Garen innovators who are thinking... You know what? Let's start refillable pot, and let's not even pair it with boots. Let's go ahead and pair it with a control art or something. Get some control arts going. All right, guys. I need to have a talk with you guys. What are you doing? What are you doing? Refillable potion is a great thing to pick up on your first back, but do please do not start with this item. All right. If you guys want to pair with boots, you guys feel like you can get away with it. You know, you want to do boots and um, refillable potion. You know, you go go ahead and be my guest. That that that's fine. That that's beautiful. You know, I, I did it versus a uh, who did I lane versus uh, that I got away with it. I, I I honestly forget, but it was a really passive mid lane, and I got away with it. That's that's fine. But please do not build this over all of the amazing choices available, and say you know what, I'm just gonna go for a pot. Please do not do that. All right. I am warning you, it is not going to be a fun time, and uh, you know, I, although I appreciate innovation on Garen, this is not the way to do it. So we're going to go ahead and rest our final uh, component choice here um, in the don't build this category. Now I know before I wrap up this video, some people are going to be asking, hey Rist, what about Sapphire Crystal? Hey Rist, what about Dark Seal? And to that, I would gladly say, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next Super Duper. Hope you guys enjoyed today's itemization video for Season 13. Get Aaron. Demacia, baby.